Okay, well, we should go around introducing who we are, because there's tons of people here this time. I am but Brian Mitchell. And we're here for your event, my, which was what? My senior seminar talk was this morning at 11 on uh, aggregating Twitter data or something like that. I don't remember the whole title. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. so fast. It goes away so fast. Yeah, I'm done now. I don't think about it. <laughs> Before I introduce myself, I have some real-time follow-up. Speak <laughs> <laughs> into it. This is, are these for followies? This is for followies and followers. Oh no! Um, <laughs> mostly for followies, though, because followers don't. Well, neither here nor there. Um, it turns out that monophonic sound is actually the uh, expansion of mono audio. It, it, so mono oh. refers to monophonic sound or monaural sound or something. I can't pronounce. Oh yeah, because like binaural. Yeah. Monaural. Yeah. yeah. No, no. So, so there you have it. Beats. Also, by the way, <laughs> Johnson, uh, you can find me on talk show as at brand because I'm all about that new media. And Speak short into series. the Microsoft. He is. Look at him. Loud. Just the Microsoft. Yes, it is Microsoft. Is, is Patent this, and term. Is, hello. <laughs> is, is it? Is is this thing on? I don't know. Is it? Is it working? It, yeah. It, it's, it just... it's, it's ticking along. It doesn't have a waveform, which sucks. So I'm. So I'm so I'm not. So what, it's, what it sounds like is that I'm not actually moving the meter at all. I'm there's not, there's no meter. There's so no. so if there's no meter to move. Therefore, no. I'm not moving the meter. No, right. Well, it is fun to be here for the Brian Mitchell show, which is this might as well be at this point. Uh, yeah, I'm Ryan Ramperset. I do production now, and I am so good at production. I don't even buy the right cord when I'm trying to make one of these shows. Well, you got the right the adapter. Yeah, I got the right adapter after just just figuring out for hours what I needed to buy. That was uh, that was great. Uh, yeah, we have to thank Ian here for organizing this whole show. Because, oh, I was going to say that when I introduced myself. Yeah, but uh, we don't <laughs> know. <Thanks> yourself. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have to thank Ian for, you know, you know finding Brandon and I, for finding Brian, and suddenly stumbling upon Max <laughs> and finding Sam here. Just I knew that Max was coming. I don't think I've... I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so this is a first on different levels. I've never been recording a show outside of the studio, like, for real, and Except really, for at the bus stop. That's where it all started. Yeah, there, there wasn't actually the bus stop technically. It was in front of my house, and I didn't record outside. Oh. Um, and I don't think I've had this many people, but physically <laughs> in one place to record before. So this That's is true. pretty cool. If it works, I mean, there is no proof this works. Well, the proof will be when it when it comes out. <laughs> yeah. When we, uh, are are you somewhere. participating? Okay. Thanks. Uh, hi, my name is Sam Roth. I used to guest star on Ian's show once in a while. Um, if these guys are like the A nerds, I'm like the C nerd. <laughs> I, I just kind of got pulled in here. I didn't know that this was going to happen. I don't think this is actually recording. I'm, I'm no, gonna, it is recording. No, I, I'm going to go 75 that this is not going to work out. Oh. And we're just going to be a bunch of idiots standing here talking to a microphone. So what, what awesome. have we been doing for the but, last two but, hours? But that said, it will only be the six of us who ever see this show. So <laughs> Okay, so this luckily, matters. Sam... Even though you're a C nerd and we're A nerds, we have an A to C adapter here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and now I'm gonna go kill myself. <laughs> is that another microphone? Yeah. This is Max Marty making my speak into the Microsoft and completely accidental return to podcasting. Woohoo! Accidental. Do you remember what? Oh. Do you remember what was the last episode you were on on the network? Yes. Years ago, I I was on with Emma. Yes. He was only on ever at one episode because <laughs> he hated me so much. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of... <laughs> I know. Was that the one about what you would bring to a desert island? No. It was the one about bananas. <laughs> I remember this. Yeah, like, he remembers I all his shows. I remember all my shows. <laughs> wow. The only thing he's got in his life. I Come on. I do listen to for Super Pets. So. Yeah. That's pretty much why. Uh, I'm Ian Buck, and uh, I had this whole intro planned out, and I don't remember any of it. Um, Boo, get off the mic. You suck. I do. I do. I really do. <laughs> I guess what, oh, I know what I can say. So despite the fact that you can't remember the title of yours, and despite the fact that mine was over a year ago, uh, I remember that the title of mine was Infotainment Interface Design in Automobiles. He's got notes. I have the whole... Oh, you cheater. My you printed it out? It, it's the schedule from the early today. Aggregating information based on geolocated Twitter data. Now put it in your own words. <laughs> that is so hard. Hard. You made that title. Uh, Elena made that title. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Okay, fair enough. 
<laughs> oh man! And hopefully, hopefully, uh, Liv will be joining us soon. She messaged me saying one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. This is exciting! Oh yeah. my gosh! And I don't actually, know if my CMS can handle it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that every single person here has been on at least one episode at somewhere on the Nexus There's before. There's so many phones. Who was it? That was mine. Okay. Okay. That was Can cool I just say, Brandon, like I really appreciated uh, during one of the talks uh-huh. when it was the 50-minute mark. And yeah, that was your good. Your watch made the noise and mine buzzed at the exact same time. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was like, is this mine? Wait, mine's never on ringer. I know. I know. It will, and you're not going to believe this, too, because you're not going to believe this, too, because I actually had it set up. Ooh, is that a... Um, it's not the Apple a, Band. It's a third But party. it's a NATO. It's yes. a NATO watch. Okay, we'll have to talk about that later. Anyway, <laughs> but, you know, as I was saying, um, so I set my watch to have the ringer on for navigation purposes, which of course we never use because Ian is awesome right. and uh, knows how to go places. Um, and of course I didn't ever have the presence of mind to turn off until the time to stand up lazy person alarm <laughs> oh, yeah. at precisely, what would you say that was? 11.50 a.m.? Probably something like that? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. 11. Okay. Yeah. 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 It was in the morning. 11.50 p.m. Something like that. I think it was 11.50. I don't know what it was. 11.50. Because, it's, yeah, that's right, because the second time. Oh, wait, no. I, I it it couldn't have been 11.50 because I was standing at whole, I was standing the whole time. So that's it was true. 12.50. It was okay. 12.50 because I know it wasn't during yours. That's right. Because I actually, yeah, that, okay, that would make sense. So now that I've been incoherently babbling about my Apple Watch for so, a while, don't worry, there's yeah, another second that. Question about that Apple Watch. Yeah. Uh, does so the, it has ringer mode? Does it only vibrate or does it also make noise? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes to which part? <laughs> Both. Uh, so it, 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 if you so let me let me show you right now. So I real time demo. Real time demo. I uh, just turned off silent mode on the watch. Now if I set a timer for like one minute. Uh, one of us will be interrupted by the awesome noise coming. <laughs> oh, it's, this is like a game. Like, like we talk too long. Yeah. I have another question about the watch. How much does Apple pay you to advertise? Oh, that? come on! <laughs> uh, look at this guy. He's a Google the, man. I think the uh, precise oh, amount. Whatever. The precise amount is negative oh. three hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> per year. Accurate. Per year. Yeah. Because yeah, I was curious because I have a Pebble now and uh, it only vibrates. So luckily for me, that means that when even when my phone is in do not disturb mode, uh, I can just leave it on. I think we're getting and uh, at, at school. So yes. Yeah. Hey, Liv, come introduce yourself onto the impromptu recording that we totally planned out earlier. Okay, thanks. No? Okay. <laughs> it's good to see you. I need to hug. Okay, well, while Brandon is here, and Brian is still here, and Ian is going off and celebrating, so we have some questions about the uh, Smiling software. We do. What are the questions again? I forgot. Oh, so how did that tie into the geolocation data system stuff? Oh, perfect timing. Uh, no time for that question. Imagine yes. <laughs> so I realized uh, now when you bring that up, maybe I should have done a little more. So the, that paper was 14 pages long. So there's a ton of Yeah. Um, I chose to present on what I did because that was more like, interesting. However, they did do some things with location. So they could use, um, they found that neighborhoods that had statistically higher income levels were happier than those with lower income. Okay. So looking at demographics of people in different locations and comparing that. Um, yeah, with my three examples, it was hard to fit in. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, it seemed like it was fine during the thing, but afterwards when we were talking about it, we just couldn't remember what it had to do with Geo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more information, better. Uh-huh. And, and I mean, like, at some point, you have to know what country they're from or city. Yeah. yeah. So that's used for comparing right. a certain right. location. Right. Yeah. Ooh, I have a question. So are you particularly tired because you're sleeping somewhere, or do you always have bags underneath your eyes? It's just it's frustrating. I don't sleep as much as I should. Uh, last night I went to bed probably about one thirty. Woke up at nine. However, a roommate was up at five a.m. to go to a uh, rugby competition this weekend, so I did wake up and was tossing. But you know, stress before this doesn't make me sleep super duper well. Right. But hey, now you're basically done. You're basically graduated. So just come back. I have a big robotics assignment due tomorrow. Or, I mean, Monday that I have not started. So <laughs> that's that we'll get going. That's true. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah. I know. Without Ian, we've got nothing. Yeah. You know, without Ian, we have to keep handing the mic off to figure out what to do. Yeah, I mean, there's still no proof that this even works, but we don't need proof. <laughs> so, since you guys are in Morris for the first time, what do you think? What What have you seen? So you've been in the student center, and you heard some music coming from the tech center, the barn dance. It's 
Nicole. 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 I worked it two years ago. Like, kind of, yeah. And so I, Sam and I aren't I've got, getting anything. I've got a couple of things. Well, well, the first thing I'll say is it speak was, into it. The first thing I'll say is that Morris is very Morrissey. Wow. Ooh. Now, what does that wasn't mean that for those who don't know? Wasn't that a good? Wasn't that a good Morrissey joke? No, no that wasn't. That wasn't an awful Morrissey joke. Yeah. Because I don't even have sufficient context to make a good one. I have a fun fact. I actually have real legit non-sarcastic things to say there. But first. So before you get into your sheet, just, just remember, the largest earthquake in Minnesota was recorded in Morris in 1976, I think it was. That's right, everybody's foundation. Fun fact about Morris. All right, back to you. Wow. So Morris, Morris has actually been pretty fun. Uh, we, we rolled in around 10.45 uh, and dashed up the stairs to figure out uh, where, where exactly we were. <laughs> and then the science building has two branches, and we had to run over to the other branch? It's, it's very science -y. Did you go to Science 1020 or 1031? We did, and then, well, we didn't actually go there, because Ian was like, this is dumb, I know where it's happening. And, and it showed us where, where, we were, where we were supposed to go, and it's awesome. Um, but uh, we've also been downtown a little bit. I guess that would be considered downtown. Is that downtown? Yeah, that's Main Street. That's, that's Main Street. It is town. It is town. Okay. It is town. Yeah. Well, it's not necessarily town. There's no directions. My, my, my next question, so, my, I, I have a question yeah, for the so, Morrisites so in, in, in the room, if that's, a, if that's the demon you prefer. Um, what, is there an uptown to Morris then? But, uh, is, maybe this is the is uptown. This is uptown. Is this is as close as you get. So there are two different Morrises. There's the Morris that you'll hear about here on the podcast, which is the college Morris, oh, where all the young people go, and they spend all the time at the college, or they go to yeah. Willie's, which is the local grocery store shop. And then there's the real Morris, which is where 85% of the population of Morris interacts. That's where you've got a lot of old, religious, mostly white, some Hispanic people who work there. Um, as for Uptown, the upscale fun place to go in Morris... Uh, Johnson Entertainment, where I am not employed right now, is the best place to go in Morrisville and have a good time. So that's Stratcom, by the way. <laughs> yeah, what, you, what you were doing, that was, that was, that was Stratcom, that was fine. Um, I just got the, but yes, I, I, can, I can also put a seal of approval on Johnson Entertainment, because that's where we were for a little while. Uh, so, uh, stepping back a bit, we, after we saw uh, Brian's uh, presentation, we went over to uh, lunch at an Italian restaurant in town, which is awesome. What was it called? Does anybody know? Machine. Okay, I can't yes. say that. Um, <laughs> yes, was it awesome? Don was open still, or was it no? It was really like well, if it was Italian, it would have been Bella Cucina. It was Bella Cucina, yeah. And it was awesome. And then, yeah. then we went to Radio Shack. No, wait. Yeah, we're right. Right. Yeah. We did go to Radio Shack. Oh, that's where you got the uh, adapter. Yeah, so that's where we got the adapter. Wow, which, which, yeah, yeah. Exists. yeah. Radio I know. Well, I'm going to yes. talk about it right <laughs> after. So, uh, yes, I, th I think now would be an appropriate time to discuss our trip to Radio Shack and the acquisition of said adapter. Well, so it turns out, as production manager, I don't know how to production. And so I bought the wrong cable. Uh, I was supposed to buy whatever that is, 3.5 millimeter to whatever is supposed to go into a mic, which is not nail, apparently. The mic does not identify as I mic. don't understand. <laughs> I still don't get it. Well, anyway, so it turns out that you can't really buy XLR parts from other than just, like, a, a guitar store or, you know, some kind of music store. There's not a lot of places to go these days. Except, except in Morris, where there's a Radio Shack on the main street in the town, which is amazing. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it is beautiful. It is incredible. And they had one just sitting right there on the shelf, mislabeled, but it was still good enough. <laughs> but, you know, for all your technological needs, Johnstown Entertainment uh, has things much more affordable than Radio Shack. They typically have corporate markup. We don't have that. We're a small family-owned company. Compassy. <laughs> John Amundsen is always. Why do you keep saying we, Sam? I thought you said you didn't. You don't work there. Uh, go to hell, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what I could say about that is, would your business have XLR adapters? <laughs> <coughs> Good question. Good question. <laughs> of course, they would. You just have to give me a. 14 day notice, okay. and I would have it for you for the same price as Radio Shack plus three ninety nine shipping. Okay. Well, I think I gave you about a four minute notice, so that's the best I can do. Sorry. So, uh, moving on to something totally random and different, I want to hear Brian about how you modified the um, the NATO uh, watch 
band you got there to actually work with an Apple Watch because my Apple Watch does not is not that fancy. And I'd like to hear that story. Some website sells a NATO band Apple Watch thing for like forty dollars and I bought it or it was given to me. That was all. So some couple so, okay. they made. So I think it's a lugs. The main if you want to buy just lugs for different colors. For it um, is the speak the, into it. Uh, the metal part. Deep. That's like the mellowest voice. The metal part. Total, Total silence. silence. The metal part can be different colors. There are multiple colors they have. I don't know. I thought it worked pretty well. I don't think I'll get an Apple one because this one works pretty well. Is, you know, my next, uh, gotcha. So, yeah, and it, also it works. Has, I was uh, wearing black because it matched my belt and my shoes. <laughs> I have a leather one that's brown and I have my black sport, but it's not <laughs> quite as <laughs> classy as the NATO. The NATO um, isn't always classy either. And then also any... You can gotcha. install more apps on the phone. That yeah, that's really that's really interesting because of course, um, unfortunately, because I am trash, I'm I really <laughs> like the Apple, uh, so like the ESPN, Apple NATO esque watch bands right. that they have there. But of course, they're totally not functional, um, as, as you might imagine. Uh, it's such a pseudo NATO watch band to be. Um, one could argue, one could argue that the that most Apple watch bands are not terribly functional, but the watch itself is pretty uh, awesome and I enjoy it. But if you want to hear me like ramble more about that stuff, are, uh, listen to uh, any episode of the podcast <laughs> that I am on, pretty much. <laughs> Again, that's Strat Com. That, that, yes, this, well, is, this is also bad, that's Strat Com. That's skill. Segways, and not like the sort of thing that you ride on with two feet and lean forward, or whatever. I like it. What? Segways? Oh, well, right. <laughs> really? I have on that note... So Max, how has how has it been? Um, so uh, how's it been to be back in like, Morris and see senior seminar conferences uh, as an alum? Well, well, I'll tell you something. Uh, this morning, I woke up in my car. <laughs> that was entirely intentional, but it's still kind of surreal. Uh, so I drove my house slash car <laughs> to. <laughs> that was this morning. Uh, had some coffee, some breakfast, as you would. Uh, then I just kind of drove around for a while. Uh, I went to like, Shopko. Um, nice. Ooh, yeah, big, big box experience. <laughs> uh, then just kind of saw the sights, and then I went to Senior Sims, and that was uh, very interesting and quite grueling. <laughs> When you say salt sites, do you mean all one of them? That is, you saw the entire town at once with a cursor glance, you're like, oh, that took me to Morris, right? Yeah, I kind of did a loop around the whole town, just kind of drove, uh, looked at uh, hills. What's that take, like 30 seconds, 40 seconds? <laughs> uh, I mean, my car is not very fast, so uh, it took about a minute. Oh, interesting. Did you hit any pedestrians on that on that street? I did not hit any pedestrians. Good. No, it's okay, we don't care. You can tell us the truth. <laughs> oh, that case. Only all of us are insurance no. adjusters. This, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been, I don't know. I, I, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun to hang out with Morris today and uh, catch up with Brian and all of these people that I met. I finally met Ian. Finally meet Ian? Yes, that's right. That's right. Holy shit, you just met Ian? Well, I mean, uh, I don't the internet, but... Leave now, he's never gonna go away. <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's been following me for years. <laughs> On Twitter. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I mean in person. Ian Buck, Ian R. Buck has been following me for like 10 years now. Look, there he is, he's looking. I said his name and he perked up. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to hear more from Max. Oh no, Ian's turn apparently. I perk up when people say my name almost as fast as I perk up when people say Star Wars. <gasps> I just saw the seventh movie for the first okay, time the so, other day. So, so I haven't really talked to Max for years. It's been uh, like three or four years since the banana episode, okay. and I don't know what's happened to you since then. Since like, the like you know, Sam disappeared. Not you, Sam. The different Sam. Sam disappeared, and I know you existed in the world. So I want to know more about what you've been doing lately. Oh, okay. Well, I was in Morris, uh, black hole of information and uh, souls. Yeah. So <laughs> mostly, I was just uh, working on getting my degree, and then I graduated last uh, about a year ago. Yeah. And now I'm working at a media company doing front end development. Oh, right. Cool. So, uh, what's that pay? <laughs> you can just give me the vague, uh, let's start at 40k, give, give me an up or down, or a, like, 50? <laughs> it's between 50 and 100. Low end. 
Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that's more good. than I'll make in the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, come on. So, so that's that's really good. I, I love when people work at media companies. That's good. So, did you have like a secondary oh, minor or second major or anything, or was it just all computer science? I no minor. I just did the absolute minimum work required. Uh, that boy is not Yep, I'm min maxing life right now. Uh, it's going according to plan. <laughs> that's why you're living in your car. Yes, my car offers the greatest uh, savings. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to get a hotel. It's, uh, my car, okay, so my car is a station wagon. A very classy Ooh. station wagon at that. That's why it goes so slow. Oh, all right. From 1995. Uh, it has space in the back for a full twin size bed. Of course. And I put that in there, and it's quite luxurious. And it's got a lot of use, if you know what we mean. I. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that is good to hear that you're doing so well. I'm I'm glad. So I, I heard that you sent a picture to Sam earlier. Did that Did that work? Did Did it, yes. did it go through? Did it get a response? Uh, maybe. I would I would love to include Sam in the most vaguest way possible on the show. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think he's the one member that I haven't uh, had on a show in like ten years. Are we talking about the Eberts? Yes, the one true Sam. No, thanks. No, 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 no. <laughs> done. <laughs> Technically, I could say that you've been on more shows than him. But you haven't, so I can't. How many shows has he been on? I, how many shows was Sam on? Like fifteen? Fifteen. Well, let's let's get a count. Let me open up the Sam. Didn't he have his own show? show? Yeah, Sam had his own show. I okay, want my own show. Okay, okay, here's here's the deal. I'll offer you this. You've been on a more recent show than him. Does that count? <laughs> Your voice just, you're so desperate to appease. Who hurt you when you failed to make them happy that you want to make me so happy? Now? Just you. Your TV is still on. Oh my god. You just touched my heart. Your TV? No, remember? No. Okay, well, whenever you were on Ian's show, your TV was always on in the background. Okay. Yeah. Did it get picked up by the mic? Yeah, all the okay. time. And okay. I, uh, we, we always made jokes about it. So I was making money from the Dragon Ball Z people. Sure. So yeah, I had to advertise watching, for If you were show. watching Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I had to have them advertised. Uh, update, Sam has not looked at the oh. image yet. You will know when he does. Okay. And according to my cursory and perhaps frighteningly error-prone uh, count of the number of shows that Sam has been on, okay. uh, the Nexus, based on the, based on the website, he's been on approximately 39-ish Episodes. Yeah, don't include French. Yeah, don't include, include, don't include, include French. French. That's 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 fake. So divided by two. -ish. So divide. Yeah, I guess if we divide it by two, that's like eighteen ish. Eighteen ish. Yeah. And some of those aren't true. Okay, no <laughs> that guy. <laughs> uh, number two. Um, I ask, considering that we're our audience, just something to self-reflect on. How empty are all of our lives that we keep coming back to recording ourselves talking? And we don't even know if it's working. <laughs> and this is this is just what we do for fun. This is this is our lives. This is how we catch up with people we haven't seen in forever or ever. <laughs> I, I mean, to be honest, this is how we catch up. I mean, Ian comes over all the time every Sunday after brunch to record some show about something, and I barely remember what it's even about. Less <laughs> frequently. <laughs> Yeah, unless we're <laughs> is, uh, no comment. Yeah, no comment on that. Very one. irregular. Yeah, so uh, here, here's Brian for more. So Pumpkin started off. We almost did weekly for the whole summer, and then uh, I went to Denmark, and that didn't help anything. It was basically Sunday night for me. It was the only time it worked. I think it was Sunday night for us too, wasn't it? Yep. Well, like afternoon. <laughs> I don't know. Unless sometimes it got late, and then it was like one a.m. for me, and it was you know, like six for you or something like that. But no, whatever. I have eight thirties every day. Um, um, Old night. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then, like, um, I came back to Minnesota. What a break! We did one or two, and then uh, I started to be really busy. And then see your son happen. And then we, and then, and now this. So hey, yeah. Well, for th a few weeks here, you know, I've been at work, and we had been hiding out the fact that we were going to come up here. So we could not have talked to you at all for any reason. It was complete firewall and radio silence. Yes, admittedly, I would be the person who would just be like, looking forward to seeing your presentation on Saturday. <laughs> on Twitter, of course. Yeah, on Twitter. Um, and then every, and then, uh, and then I would have been blocked and reported for spam. Deservedly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, your name's Brian? Yes. Um, you were not wearing that bow tie when you gave a presentation. You were not. You were wearing a real tie. Yeah, they didn't finalize it until, like, last month. But so, a, a bow tie is a real tie. <laughs> Why? <laughs> However, this bow tie has a clip in the back. So <laughs> it's not even a real bow tie. <laughs> so, it's, 
It's so if you start at real ties, it's not a real tie. It's not a real bow tie. So it's two levels down from that, which is one lower than what you were trying to already give me crap for. <laughs> if I was your professor, I'd have failed you on principle. Oh. You would have to do it again. <laughs> we demand proper fashion, real ties, or at least real clip-on ties, not clip-on bow ties. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, know. I have one I, argument I to this, and that is like, Bill Nye, the so science what, guy. Excuse me while I drop the mic. Who? So Bill Nye came to Morris uh, fall semester of last year. Um, I'll plug myself here. He signed my Bill Nye, the science guy, cards against humanity card. It's pretty cool. Anyway, he has a bunch of real bow ties that he ties himself. Someone True. asked him that in the Bespoke. questions. However, I've seen bow ties that have a clip that are on the front. This one at least has the fabric that goes around and connects to the back. So it's like a second rate bow tie, not a third rate. <laughs> okay, yeah, fine. I'd give you a D in your senior seminar if I was your professor for that. It's a pass fail class, so. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'll let you know. So, speaking of senior seminar stuff, we were discussing what we would do if the U of M Twin Cities had senior seminars and stuff. What did you do? Well, we don't have that. No, any there, there is no none of that. We just we just take our last class and we go to graduate school. Yeah, we don't do that. That that, that costs money and that sucks. Well, so you know, of course, you know, I'm the compilers guy, so I probably would have had to talk about compilers because I'm compelled. But what, what, what about Brandon? Because you know, he's he's just all over the place. Yes, that is a good question. So I am. Uh, in the rather strange position, even though the U of M Seaside program doesn't have uh, a capstone sort of class uh, or a capstone project sort of thing, uh, the journalism school does. So I will end up doing something vaguely similar to that. Um, and and that wasn't really the question, though, was it? No, so I guess, good so I guess um, if I were if I were to do something in Seaside, I would probably uh, I'd probably do something related to. Um, Something really probably boring to most people is test-driven development because that's something that I really enjoy. Um, academic. There have been talks about it. Really? Oh, well, that's, that's good to hear. I'm glad that I picked a thesis topic out of midair that is vaguely yeah. relevant. Yeah, midair, totally yeah. relevant to the things you do, actually. <laughs> well, you know, um, but but my actual thesis, I'm considering doing something on uh, Crisis Com because Crisis Com is my jam. Uh, so Crisis Tracker. Yeah, in, yeah. In, 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 Part right, but a, a lot of a lot of my interest has to do with like the way that um, huge companies and massive brands like how, how those hashtag brands like handle crises. Um, right, right, and like one of, one of the biggest like most contemporary examples of this is like Apple versus the FBI, right? Because everyone's like, oh, well, the encryption thing is just for. It's just for show, you know, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, right. you know, they don't really un okay. understand what this, you know, what role encryption is supposed to play, and yeah. I don't buy into that, but I think that it's really interesting that that's a route that, in this case, it's law enforcement, um, chose to, chose to, chose to, hey, um, when talking about Apple's kind of perspective on things, now from a, from a stratcomer kind of thing, as, as I would take such a thesis, um, is it moral? I uh, I'd probably end up talking more about like how antagonists in general um, respond to a brand new crisis. Right. And there's tons of at Hat Brand like pronounced like my name. Hat Hat Brand new crisis. Hopefully there are not many of those. Um, so I guess um, I'll have to see whether any of that gets even remotely approved because. Uh, that still has to be approved, but it will well, be interesting to see nonetheless. No, However, my, my presentation will not be nearly as eventful, I think, and, and nearly as interesting as yours. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Neither confirm nor deny my presence in yours. <laughs> <laughs> Is yours public? I don't believe it is. I, okay. I think um, I think the way that it works is I write a paper and it is read and reviewed by people and I make edits that paper and then eventually uh, I get a bunch of professors, hopefully professors who like that, uh, to ask me questions about it. And then, if they like my answers to those questions, then I think I pass and graduate. But uh, I'm not 100% sure. This is, this is all very uh, whirlwind thing, which maybe isn't something I should be uh, saying into a microphone. But literally, this past Wednesday, I found out that I uh, 
both graduating. But it's not like I'm Well, I knew that I was going to graduate sometime. Yeah. I knew that I was going to graduate sometime. So we're just going to next summer. Next summer, because that's four years for me. Right. But I figured out that I'm going to graduate in the fall instead, which is neat and new and a little bit surprising. But that has lots of effects on things like when I write my thesis, because that means I have to write it in the next six months. But luckily, the journalism school has ways of doing this because, in some ways, it's more rigorous than the average thesis program at the U, and in other ways, it's more watered down. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty one way or another. But that's why, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not open because it's basically just professors that have questions about things. I think it's supposed to be at least indicative of a standard thesis defense if there is to be such a thing. I would not know, but I'm excited for it. Unless. 35 W, going south a little bit, and we got up in 36. I'll take the mic. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That sounds good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
think they might have been really confused if it was unrendered. Oh, that's that's true. That's true. So I use um, Brett Terpstra's oh, of course awesome you do. Uh, Marked app, which is used to render Markdown for things, and I actually really enjoy it. Otherwise, if I'm just uh, outputting it to HTML, I will sometimes just use. Uh, the Markdown parser, whatever Markdown parser you can get easiest from NPM. Uh, because NPM is big. So that was on the LaTeX subreddit, and some people were, were asking about resumes. Um, someone said, should I turn in my resume in LaTeX or in PDF form? And uh, so most people were like, well, why would you turn it in LaTeX form? A couple were like, Oh, that would be kind of cool. Like it shows that you know LaTeX, but like it also shows you don't have any like prediction yeah. skills. Yeah, yeah. if and anyone actually cares if you did your resume in LaTeX, they don't know what's LaTeX. Yeah, exactly. Like just include LaTeX rendered in its LaTeX way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Unless you, I guess, save to like. HTML, oh, yeah. have it CSS no, yeah. 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 it's cool. Uh, paper in it. Yeah. CSI club or CSI discipline here has a nice template. Yeah. Which I, I don't modified in open pull request right now. Right. They're sitting I above four. Four. changing the Creative Commons version like four, reducing a margin and object yeah. above that. Um, I was able to change the license. We'll see that yeah. after that. So, speaking of license changes, we've had that. I don't know if this is really the thing we want to talk about. It is. Maybe it's not necessarily general interest. I mean, this will either be published or it won't be published, so it doesn't matter if it's about yeah, it or don't talk about it. Like <laughs> Schrodinger's podcast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just um, yes. I think that's a podcast we might do. It's no, that's true. true. What is it? Schrodinger's what? What is it? What is it? Uh, I don't remember. It. Like, I don't either. Uh, but it's a show we came up with yeah. on the way up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll think about it again on the way yeah, back. Okay. Let me know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'll say the same thing. I know. Uh, the, uh, so what I was going to say though was well now I even forgot what I was. Gosh, right. Oh, but to answer your question more specifically, yes, I do have two resumes, uh, but I recently merged them back into one because I figured that. So, when has in the eventuality that I do apply for another position, I will have to write that resume to that position anyway. So, I just have all of this stuff in a markdown document, and I call that my resume, but I'll probably have to cut it, rewrite it, uh, simplify something, expand it. We're just going to rotate towards each other slightly. But I don't actually have a friend uh, terribly. So a lot, a lot of people tend to ask me like, whether I'm going to go to the com. No, I think our first going to be terrible. So I'm like, the tech group, a web developer, or system architect, or DevOps person who manages Docker containers all day. Um, it, by the way, if anyone has a job that's solely managing Docker containers, <laughs> hit me up. Because I'm sure I know Docker Machine and all of the Docker options front to back, uh, upside down, and like the back of my hand. Because, uh, yeah, that's a story for a different show. everything. <laughs> About it, but actually, it just yeah, kind of straight from the original. Yeah. <laughs> right. I've been thinking about putting my, my weather bots not on Heroku at some point. Finally, here's some board culture. I should probably make them into a Docker container and put them somewhere. Yeah, like on a Linux slice. Yeah, I was thinking about. Otherwise, we should talk, Brandon. I want to do that probably this summer because I want to. Like Heroku works for 18 hours a day. Like when I when I look for six hour chunks of time when they don't turn, it becomes pretty apparent. Like I was looking today. I think one account hasn't done a forecast in like a week because it is a sleep that time. So I think it's once I graduate, I can start. Before I have a job, I can start dishing out more money per month for all that. You know, you can even get. Yeah. Uh, this episode is not brought to you by Linode, but you can even get a ten dollar Linode server. And that's all I would need. And that's what Ian has. I have a twenty dollar one. What do you have? You use DigitalOcean. Same thing. That's true. I use DigitalOcean. I have that's all the five dollar a month DigitalOcean server, which is the most basic of basic DigitalOcean servers. In fact, I think the the UI, the admin UI, the DigitalOcean. 
consider gets kind of sad at me when I think about it. Yeah, she's like, oh, come on. Really? But I have never, ever, ever had any problems with that other than one time when I was running an app that wasn't quite finished. And it was for like a CSI class project. And there was some memory overrun of the C code and it caused the whole thing to die. Well, I don't I don't run rogue software on my production servers. That's why. See, that makes sense, but in this case, that server was far from production. Yeah, it was like, oh, okay. uh, it, it was like, uh, it was like worse than, it, it was like less stable than dev. Ooh. Like super alpha, you dev. useless, yeah, like, you dev. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyhow, so I do use DigitalOcean. Um, I watched the It's good enough. It's really, 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 yeah, I, I like it a lot. I actually have two DigitalOcean servers. One that's just a random box that I run. So it's, it's, it's got I, Ubuntu. I, when I, I think, think it's running 14.4. Like mm -hmm. um, I'll probably have so that at some point. Now that they're 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, uh, is this where the whole containers, is this where the post theory started? The relativity? Yeah. Uh, and and you can, you can, was a you can manage the oh, yeah. things a lot easier in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, for example, if I'm building an app that uses like uh, Redis to cache things, so what are you uh, Rails to code, or some so sort of much. app but framework like engine, yeah. Yeah. environment yeah, sure. engine, like, uh, to actually run the code and a lot of that that manages it. And it's something to serve to the outside world. Do that, but that with that we're gonna really and we're gonna if I want, I can just like power them down, export them, save them, and then so, make so a change, change yeah, it back right. up, and fix them from there. Now, there is one other thing in the Docker universe that I think I might be interested in talking about. It's called Project Atomic. I don't know if you guys have heard of it at all. I don't. Uh, I don't hear about your cool things. So it's done by Docker. So Project Atomic is a thing that came out of the Red Hat world. Yes, it's not. Yeah, it's not the one that's apparently actually. Actually has to do with like our uh, radiation and it's the one that has to do with Docker and the applications because I think I can tell you I changed my stuff. It's actually a an operating system apparently that is to make running Docker containers really easy. And I know Red Hat is doing a lot of really interesting things. Sure. <laughs> What's their their web their, 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 their <laughs> operating system management tool? That sounds like port ninety ninety. What is it called? Do you know what I'm talking about? So like sometimes you come out. It's it's shipped on all versions of Android. Thank you. No, it's not legit. It's some tool you can load over a network that will show system stats like CPU usage, basically like a web based activity monitor. And log in the user account on the computer. Like this one. Um, so this is like the registry. <laughs> no, no I'm not sure. What that is. This is a different project. Um, uh, project <laughs> Atomic is well, it runs in Project Atomic too. I know. I don't remember what it's called. Oh, sorry. It never works. I can never log in on my own server, so I just SSH and don't deal with control. I'll be sure to put it I still have no install in there. It's kind of too late to install it because yeah. Why not? I don't know. You'll get it fixed um, when you get a real actual VPS. Uh, the thing is, I needed a, a GUI also, for partitioning oh and re uh, formatting my hard drive. Because uh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to do it. So this is, no. this is like family like that. Long. So that's why I have no install. Uh, but on a VPS, I don't have to manage it because I'm not like sending hard drives to one of the digital ocean to say, plug this 10 terabyte thing into it and then my this random SATA port and map it to my computer. Next. At work, um, somebody brought up that, uh, so we're, we're doing a healthcare application, and we don't have data right now, but in the future, we might have a boatload of data, because it's collecting prescriptions from pharmacies across 17 states, and that's increasing. So apparently Amazon offers the service where if you ask them, they'll ship you this, you know, fairly large box, and it has, um, like, I don't know, like 250 terabytes worth of space in the box, and you can just plug in over a 10 gigabit port and just pump your data in it, send it back to them, and they'll just put it into S3 for you. And, and, it, and, it's, and it's cheap, 
you just you just pay like you know a temporary payment for the box, no, and when you send so it back, they take it I've off, been, I've been and this you just pay for this three days um, like normal. It's, wow, so that's yeah. cool. Uh -huh. so you need to listen you, to because it's, it's, it's two hundred fifty terabytes, so <laughs> that's going to that's going to take a while to store. But you know, even yeah, fiber is going to take a long time. What would it be like? If yeah, I so it's pretty cool. My cool. parents is straight. Yeah. Yeah, you you will really like the world of having a VPS. One continuous server always available. I, I definitely think I will. Yeah, it's uh, it's not comparable. I've I've uh, I've been used for well, last spring semester. I had my server and I had that in my dorm room. And since I see why it's great each IP is external and no ports are like firewalled. So yeah, I had that going all the time, which is nice. I didn't use it a ton, but. It was nice to have, and the computer science labs here, all the computers are on all the time. So I, I do have a quick yeah. machine I can access any time, but I try not to use it too much because I know I'm leaving here soon. Though, I don't think they've cleared out any old accounts for a couple of years, so I probably could still use it. I'm sure I can log in. Yeah, I know Adrian Schiller left a message under a root home folder on a couple of machines over a few weeks or months ago. And Peter Dolan noticed. I wrote a message back. It's easy. Oh, uh, that's so cool. I might do that too. Unless they change root passwords. Yeah, unless they figure it out. Like, it totally changed this. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. Like, on the UMN campus, Twin Cities, we can't do that. Oh, Most computers God. are locked down. You know, our, we, don't, we can't get back. We don't have credentials anymore. We can't get into the oh, network. We get that. nothing. That's why UMC size is great, because we have our own LDAP and NFS servers. And so, things are managed. They work. It's not the best practices, but it's eff it's effective. It's localized, and we completely manage all of it. So it's nice that way. From my perspective, we also have our own LDAP. It's just a different LDAP that's bigger and worse. Hey, <laughs> buddy. My, my friend is doing that LDAP. Yeah. Well, your but LDAP can go be simple in the corner. I guess that's all I have to see. <laughs> is that the LDAP server that holds all of the things? So I was thinking we could probably type them down. Because our LDAP server is just more or less everyone's username is next up hundred. It didn't used to be that crazy, but you know, 10 years ago I think they switched to next up So it can more or less hear it. The only issue we have is home folders. I don't know what fields that's been stored. Maybe we you know, cache that on our own. At that point, let's just run around. Can I ever just go like this? Uh, so I think we'd be happy with you guys. Uh, <laughs> but we also want a whitelist, so only our own student. We also want a whitelist, so only our own computer science students would be able to watch. For sure, and there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. Um, but we'll do this online. There's lots of there's lots of fun stuff that can happen. Uh, yeah, that, that can happen related to LDAP. So one of the things that's kind of fun is I. Uh, oh, did you get one? <laughs> I gotta give them out. I have 250. <laughs> I, I work a lot with like. Huh? Do they pay for this? Yeah. Brian tells me that this season is really good. And she'll. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I watched. I'm good. So. I don't know. Captain America appeared in it yet? Yeah, so, you know, like half of the people who started the show left us. <laughs> so I don't know about that. That's kind of weird. Hi, Ian. How's it going? Good. Good? I like. I like having like a group where I brought all the people together because no matter who I go and talk to, I'm gonna have a good time. Even if everybody, <laughs> nobody else can find people who they like to talk to, I, I, I love Sam. Shut I'm, up. I'm very selfish. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, I mean, chances <laughs> are, chances are, everybody who I want to hang out with is going to like hanging out with each other. But it's not a guarantee. But I, I have a guarantee for myself. Don't like each other. So what have you guys been talking about? I don't remember. I heard something about firewalls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 just talking about Your account and home folder are still there, not locked or archived. So you haven't been logging in occasionally just to say hi. Could have been. Oh gosh, I hope I didn't have like a plain text file of all of my passwords there. I hope you didn't. That'd be awful. <laughs> that sounds like you may have. <laughs> no, I'm referencing the fact that Ryan has that on his uh, <laughs> server, <laughs> desktop, what was it? So if you go to home.hipdown.com slash file slash pw.txt, have fun! <laughs> Brian, get on it. Hey, Brandon, get on it. You guys are last year? Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to authenticate at all? No. What? Yeah. Ryan, you're insane! 
I hope that's not the root password for the password for SSH. I hope it's not any password. Okay, so to be honest, I don't know which one of those anymore is my password. So you can't even extort it out of me. I don't know. Now, furthermore, it doesn't matter even if you use it because I have two factors on all the accounts that that goes to, so it doesn't matter even in a bit. Uh, follow up. Was that your last pass password, or was that something Gmail. else? Gmail. Gmail. Okay. Which one of you have a accounts? That is a mystery that is yet to be determined. Well, well, I'm sure some uh, active listener will determine that at some point. Right. Potentially, as yeah. in the next couple of decades. So yeah. Still, yeah. Uh, this reminds me yeah. of a particular XKCD where they, it was like the yeah. time of encryption where the, the hackers discover that you have a 256-bit uh, encrypted yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's no good. We can't get in. And then it said the, the next panel was like, the reality is, uh, oh, it's encrypted. Yeah. 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 Take, this, take, take this lead pipe and yeah. 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 It only works if they know the answer. Right, yes. I mean, the assumption is with a password that it, that's a thing that you know, too, right. as opposed to a thing that you have. I don't even have it or know it. I don't care. I don't have it or know it. Yeah, perhaps perhaps the best kind of authentication is something you don't have and something you don't know. Right. <laughs> and something that nobody else does either. What? Okay. So I think now, now that I've you mentioned the portion of the show where... Um, I start saying words in that voice. Um, what do you guys think? You're telling me you want to wrap this up? I don't know. I, I, I think I think we've got at least another forty minutes. But if <laughs> I don't know if that's how shows work here anymore. We're but, we're I think we're going closer to an hour now, right? That's uh, they've been getting short. Well, yeah, it's fifty-two minutes so far. All right, so we got eight minutes to wrap this up. Okay. What? Okay. So what are we going to talk about for eight minutes? Okay. Oh, they've all set a timer for eight minutes. Oh no. Let's let's bring back this. Yeah, have we accounted for guys. truncation yet? Yeah, no. And but guys. Brian doesn't edit the show. I don't edit the show. I'm going to start a fight, see if I can. Okay, oh. good luck. Text them, there's Adam versus Visual Studio Code. I have not used Adam. VC Code. Never yet. used VC Code. Text so, mate. <laughs> my, my, my hot take is that Visual Studio Code somehow has better Git support, uh, but I don't have it installed on my computer, so therefore I like Adam, because Adam is on my computer. I was definitely expecting you to say Vim versus Emacs. Oh, come on. <laughs> Something that's, that's, actual. That's, that's, that's not 2016. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking like, I was thinking like Apple's text edit versus. Why don't we all uh, stand? That's fun. <laughs> Who makes Text Wrangler? Oh, uh, I didn't mean it. What? I didn't mean it. I just want to. Okay. So it's like, it's, like a, it's like a smaller version that's free of VDI. Because amazingly enough, Text Wrangler came install, pre installed on my district. What? Oh, yeah. That's, that's cool. kind of cool. That's good. I remember using that YouTube. I remember using Text Wrangler freshman year of high school. Job. Yeah, okay. that's what that's what SPPS installs by default. Okay. That's text I remember talking to Barebones on Twitter freshman year here at Morris about Text Wrangler not supporting Retina displays yet, and it, it does not support it. They were working on it. That's all I have to say. I have to say the version of Adobe whatever whatever so you know, Photoshop and everything uh, is weirdly pixelated. Is, is that because it doesn't support right now? CS6? I think it's CS5. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the later version of CS6 supports right now, but only, not the release version of CS6, and then I think Creative Cloud does support right now as well. So if you have anything older, it will look like utter crap. Right? Okay. Yeah, because I think I definitely need to get a copy of my own, uh, not only because of that, but also because the raw format that my camera takes is too new for CS5.5. And that's why you update your software. Like, if you want, if you want to try CSX, I do have. I, I did pay for a copy of CSX. So if you want to, if you want to, um, I don't know. If you've got camera raw and you just want to convert it to some that, uh, I can I can help you out with that. I mean, I can do it on my desktop because I have a copy of CSX that. Uh, I totally legitimately got from a friend who had it from work and something, something. Oh, is that right? You know him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bob, right? Yeah. Bob, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Isn't that a thing? Yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What was the name of the voice? Was it Microsoft Sam? Yeah, I was like, what? There was multiple. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Sam, Bob, probably some more. Bill? I prefer, I prefer Mac and Oh, like, of course you do. Um, do you guys remember? I, there's, there's the guy who talks like, like, uh, 
like a church organ. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, is that Bello? He that's that was the voice used for the the old droid. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I remember Those using the Max in, in, in Reinhardt's so room to oh, do the droid so music. music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. So you were trying to start a fight and it failed. What else you got? I'll answer my own question. I don't know. Uh, I prefer uh, Adam uh, simply because it has a better glowy syntax theme. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yep, okay. you send the message there also. I do <laughs> notice that we're all standing, though. Yeah, which yeah, feels yeah, a lot yeah, more like intimidating than when we were all sitting yeah. together. Even I just wanted to stretch. We're still on the same level, but somehow it feels more confrontational. Why? I think we're closer. We're all at eye level, and it's easier to pass the microphone. I don't know why we just didn't do this from the beginning. Because yeah, nobody was here before. Everybody left. <laughs> But now we can pretty much have one person hold this point in the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Apparently that's like, Brian now. I know it's true. The human mic stand. I have a Brian mic hold. Oh. I think it's like 3, 2, 3, 4, 9, 11. I could have gotten the stand from the Tetra closet upstairs. Oh, wow. We're now in the country of Mike Stan. Oh, yeah. Did you know how many times today I've called you two, Brandon Mitchell, like, all day today? I've counted at least three. Like, that's impressive. I cannot distinguish between the two of you sometimes. <laughs> oh, I don't have my phone. You do it. So uh, with the microphone, so people can try and time sync right. this oh. to when we are talking. Guess, yeah, guess what the picture is. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Stand by. There we go. Oh, right, one more time. <laughs> Did you hear it go? What is that thing on the bottom back of your phone? It's, it's the Nexus. Nexus. It's the new Nexus. That's, that's the fingerprint sensor. Good job. Oh, oh right. yeah. No, I, I, I forgot that was I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I can recognize the Nexus. Okay. But I, I thought the yeah. I have one too. Answer. It was kind of close. Are you Here, everyone, feel how, feel how destroyed my home button is on my phone. Just press it. Oh, no. I don't know why. That happens to all my phones. I think I press it really hard. You really like going home. What? You really like going home. Do not recognize it. Gone home was an excellent game. You can call me a homeboy. Hold the whole thing. Back and forth. All right, now we're, uh, now everyone is pressing their phone touch sensors. My my, mine was to erase everything. Well, yeah, you can probably send it with work. Nah, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sending with work. I'll hold it for a minute. Well, so I have, so you know, I have a, uh, an enterprise. He's really sore when he loses. Unfortunately, and they actually force you sort of. I assume. To sign in and have a password so, and passcode and a sucky thing. So I skipped all that by installing an application to hold the credentials for me and use their server to do it. So that's why I got Nine. So what Nine lets me do is it's an app that lets you sign in with your, you know, enterprise yeah. Microsoft account, whatever they call that. Yeah. Um, no one could have done it. Exchange. Exchange, that's what it's called. I'm glad I, just, I can't remember what it's called anymore. And so the server, their server has the credentials, and my phone just interfaces with the server. So I don't have to have any of that nonsense on my phone. So you, you choose when you let, when you let your work be authenticated on your phone, so it's... No, it's always authenticated through the app, 9, but it, my work never sees my phone directly. Oh, so it's an app abstracting what yeah. used to be a system thing. Uh-huh. Oh, that's nice. So it's it a little more separated. Right. Yeah. Okay. Does, so they can't force me to suck. Does your work pay for your phone or anything? No. 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 Um, so what I had to do was, we have a dual email systems, right? Oh, we have Lotus Notes uh, for the at spps.org. Still, I remember that junior high. Yeah. Are still using it? Uh, yeah, they are. Um, and, I, I mean, they've, they've bent over backwards to, like, get this working on the iPads, right? Because everybody has the iPads. That's just yeah, all the students and all the staff. But the students don't use Lotus Notes, right? Um, because the at stpaul.k12.mn.us account, um, which all the students have, and you it's not and the staff are supposed to avoid that. You're supposed to have it automatically forward onto your svps.org account. Um, that one is just a Gmail account, right? Because that's, that's the um, that's apps for education. Yeah, right, right. Um, I decided that I did not want to ever have to touch Lotus Notes, so I went the other way. I figured out how to have Lotus Notes automatically to my Google account, and unfortunately, um, I, you still can't just sign into 
the, yeah. Uh, yeah. the, the apps the for education uh, accounts through the Gmail app on Android, Android uh, because you, you still would have to give SPPS like complete so access uh, as an administrator, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> really like it is currently IMAP to the Gmail servers, which is kind of inconsistent. Sometimes I have to re-put in all the passwords and stuff. But I'm halfway happy with it because now I can receive emails uh, on my watch while I'm teaching class and just go, I don't care about that one. Don't wait. Time is up. Where can we find you on the internet? He's completely straight. Well, as, as you might have known, I'm Brandon, and you can find me on Twitter at Brandon underscore MN or on Talk Show. And you know, it was now he. I'm Ian Arbuck. You can find me just about anywhere at Ian Arbuck. Hopefully soon, IanArbuck.com. Yeah. 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 You can find me on the train sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I'm Brian Mitchell. You can find me on Twitter at yeah. 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 or at yeah. underscore Brian yeah. Mitchell. Yeah. Doing everything together. Yeah. Of course, you can find me just whatever. Yeah. 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 And of course, on this show in the middle of Morris, <laughs> in Louis's lower level. Yeah. We still haven't figured out which show this is going to go on. That's why I said. That's why I said this show. I think to make yeah. At the time, it was special. I'm just going to think it's like a test because it's kind of the variety show. It's not like an event. It's kind of like a variety show. Yeah, this feels Ted. Ted. All right. We're going to go with Ted. Our best friend, our mutual best friend. Okay. I told him at the. What else do we have? Is that it? Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Have a good one. Bye, friends. Bye, Aunt Bailey. I wish you could be here, but you didn't go to Morris. Maybe Max Beer. I don't know if Max Beer could listen to the show. Max, Max, it's not me. Yeah, it's not you. We might have a best friend. If I just start raining, I'll play. I'm going to go for an extra cold brew. I'll probably be the first to depart. But I was like, I'm not going to go. Well, you should play the episode that he was on so that he remembers. Right. So that he's like, do that again. Wow. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, it's really fun having everybody yeah. here so just gather well, all in one place at one time. Somehow, I don't know how this happened. Through the magic yeah. of scheduling so for one event. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. That after five times, I finally met Brandon yeah. Johnson. <laughs> I stopped so I wouldn't mess up. <laughs> what do you mean, buddy? Well, no, if I stop while I'm ahead, then I don't have to think about what his last name is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you mess up the most common last name? It's been oh You're the one who keeps calling him Brandon Mitchell. <laughs> well, that's because I'm messing up the first name. <laughs> Why is it Brandon? I mean, I've already, I've already said the wrong yeah. first name, so just alternate the last <laughs> Do you have anything to say about that, Brandon Mitchell? Yeah. No. <laughs> and with that, have a good one. That was perfect. I was hoping we were going to match up for completely confidence. Those are the only two options. Yeah. So I guess either way, I would have not done a good value. That's true. I mean, whales! Beluga whales! Oh, yeah.